This is the overview for the final exam study guide. There are four questions you will be randomly assigned to as you have been in the past. Let's get started. Explain what anti-Semitism, Orientalism, and Islamophobia are and provide an example of each. As in the past, I have given you page numbers so that you can easily refer to these and begin your review. Provide a detailed history of Arab Americans and Jewish Americans in the US and give two examples of that history. Okay, so in the textbook, it does give uh, some history of each of these groups before they got to the US, but I want you to just focus on the US, okay? Just the history of these two groups in the US and two examples uh, as you discuss this. Finally, explain how the two groups experience racism in the US and provide two examples of how each group has dealt with the situation, okay? So each of these groups have experienced racism give a detailed discussion of that, and then two examples how they've dealt with the situation. Chapter 12 is the basis for question two. Describe how eugenicists tried to maintain the superiority of whites and provide two examples. So one of the things, um, and that's actually a typo, I think it should say two, I'll have to correct that page number. I can't remember off the top of my head uh, what that page number should be, but I'll correct it. Describe how eugenicists tried to maintain the superiority of whites and provide two examples. So in the textbook, there uh, is a discussion about eugenicists, people who believed in white superiority, how they tried to enact laws or policies that would enable them to maintain their superiority. Um, one of the things is just very briefly mentioned in that section of the text is that eugenicists uh, and those who supported eugenics supported the policy of sterilizing women of color, particularly black women and Native American women. And often this was done without these women's knowledge or consent, which meant that they could no longer have children. Um, and that was one way that white supremacists thought they were, they'd be able to rid uh, the U.S. of people of color, which is just by, you know, or at least making their numbers very small, which is by sterilizing uh, these women without their knowledge or consent. That's just one way. There are others that you will recall when you review the text. Discuss the history of anti-miscegenation laws and explain in detail the two legal cases that changed these laws. So uh, there's a discussion of the Bettis versus Sharp case and the Loving versus Virginia case. Make sure that you explain in detail what each of those cases was about. Who were the players? Discuss two pros and cons of adding a multiracial category to the U.S. Census. Okay, so you're going to discuss two pros, you're going to discuss two cons of adding a multiracial category. There is a discussion in the textbook under the multiracial um, identity uh, section that does um, discuss both the pros and the cons of creating this kind of category. So provide that information and then tell me which side you agree with most and why. Provide one reason for your view. Explain three ways racism hurts everyone. Okay, so uh, again, you can use the ones in the textbook or think of your own, but give me three examples, three ways. Discuss the, and don't just say A, B, and C. Tell me why A, tell me why B, tell me why C. Discuss the impacts of the racial hierarchy in the U.S. and provide two examples. Okay, so once again, you're discussing the impacts, and discussing means more than just making a statement. It means providing details um, and then giving examples of that. 
define white fragility and explain how it supports systemic racism and white advantage. Okay, so a very good discussion about white fragility. There was also um, a very good video in the module for chapter 13 about white fragility, so you might want to review those things as well. Um, and explain how the, the existence of white fragility supports systemic racism and white advantage. Okay, so make sure that you're giving examples here. Finally, in your opinion, is interest convergence positive or negative? Provide one reason for your view. Remember, oh, drop my mouse there. Remember that, um, where was I? Oh, the multiracial category and when we, okay. So remember that as you talk about these pros and these cons, you should be sure that you're giving the, the detail. Again, don't just list something without any kind of explanation. Um, oh, right here, I was right here, sorry about that. Um, and then the last question is from chapter 14. Define racial consciousness and racial literacy and provide an example of each. Okay. Discuss two ways to use these in your everyday life and give examples. Okay, so I'm gonna give you just one quick example of something that happened recently while I was traveling and I used racial literacy to understand it. I noticed these two young Asian women eating at a table nearby where my spouse and I were eating. And I noticed they were eating, um, I don't know, pork chops or lamb chops, something like that. I, I'm a vegan, so I don't eat animal flesh, um, but some kind of meat. Um, but rather than cutting it up, they lift, you know, stab it with their fork, lift it up, and then bite off of it. And I thought, huh, you know, I never really saw anybody else do that before. And then I used racial literacy and I thought, oh, I, I understand why they do that. It's because in Asian cultures, there is no such thing as a knife and fork. They use chopsticks. And so you wouldn't have a way then to cut your meat up. You just pick up the piece of meat with your chopsticks and you take a bite off of it, which is exactly what they're doing. Their practice isn't good or bad, better or worse than the westernized practice of cutting your meat up. It's just different. That's one way that I used racial literacy as often as I possibly can to try to be a non-judgmental, anti-racist person, understanding rather than judging. So think of your own ways. Define agency and describe how people can use it to support social change. Provide two examples. So. These don't have to be things that you can do, but there are some things that are discussed in the text and it'd be great if you think of ways that you can use it and maybe even give your own personal example, although you don't have to. Finally, discuss two things you learned in this course that will be helpful in your personal and work lives and explain how you will use this knowledge. Okay, it can be any two things. How will you use it? Where will it be useful? In your personal life or your work life? Maybe both. How will you use this knowledge? That is it. Um, same thing as always. If you make an outline and you make sure to actually look uh, at the pages that I've referenced for you, um, you should be able to, to do pretty well.